Second Lieutenant Ari Jean-Claude Seyoboka was sentenced to life in prison for the crimes of genocide and complicity of genocide by the military high court, after which he appealed the sentence claiming that it was a case of mistaken identity because he committed no such crimes, saying he was not even at the locations the alleged crimes were committed. Prosecutors, however, pointed out that he was convicted for well-known crimes he committed in Kigali at the St. Fami Cathedral and surrounding areas, seen by many as he committed them. The first witness to step forward was Jonathan Recheraho, who back in 1994 worked as a watchman for an employee of the World Health Organization, whose house was located near a roadblock. He said was frequently manned by the defendant who carried an AK-47 assault rifle. The roadblock was a site where many Tutsi would be killed and their bodies dumped into a deep pit. The witness said that when Tutsi were found hiding close to the said roadblock, it was 2nd Lieutenant Seyoboka who ordered their execution and killed one to set an example. Next to take the stand was Hussein Rongorongo, himself a genocide perpetrator who served his time in prison for the crimes he committed and was later released. He told the court that he had killed Tutsi people alongside the 2nd Lieutenant carrying out orders issued by Colonel Tarsis Reenzaho, who was the mayor of Kigali City at the time, and the then Major Loha Munyakazi, as well as Angelina Mukandutie, who was an important member of the Inherahamge in what used to be the commune of Nyarujenje. Rongorongo described in detail how he and Seyoboka, along with other Inherahamge militia, dragged more than 80 Tutsi from what used to be the Center of Learning for African Languages, or Sela, and killed them on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd of April in 1994. He also said that on the 17th of May, he and others carried out raids on the St. Paul and St. Fami churches to kill Tutsi, and Seyoboka was there issuing directives. Another witness to speak was Ali Ahmed Saddam Gasasira, a genocide survivor. He confirmed that 2nd Lieutenant Seyoboka was among the group that attacked St. Fami and surrounding areas, including what used to be his home, which they set alight. The fourth to give his testimony was Jean Bizimana, former burgmaster of Nyarujenje commune. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison for the crimes he committed during the genocide against the Tutsi, and he told judges that during the genocide, the second lieutenant was training in Herangwe militia in Rujenje sector, and he also listed the different raids the defendant participated in and the people he killed. Information he says he got when local leaders in Yarujenje commune dutifully submitted their reports. The only witness to speak in defense of the second lieutenant was none other than Angelina Mukandutie, herself serving a life sentence for the crimes she committed in 1994 during the genocide against the Tutsi, as a school inspector in Yarujenje commune and a member of the executive committee of the notorious Emerende party. The defendant had asked that she testify as a person who knew him well. She told judges that she used to see him walking around with other soldiers and also met in Nerangwe youth militia at her home, but that she had never seen him actually kill anyone. Prosecutors asked for his appeal to be thrown out while Henri Jean-Claude Seyoboka called for his acquittal, saying he did none of the things he was convicted for. The defendant was extradited back to Rwanda from Canada in 2016 where he had fled in 1996 and had been granted asylum but his refugee status was revoked after it was discovered that he had lied about his past, withholding the fact that he had been a military officer in what used to be the Force Armée one days. The court is to announce its decision on the 28th of June.